well, maybe there is some, uh, some mathematical structure in the universe which actually makes things show up like this. But here is a simple model, right? We're not talking about the universe or about some data that occurs in real life. We're, going to, uh, we're talking about a very precise mathematical problem. And uh, this mathematical problem might have something similar with the universe. It's like it's modeled in a very small scale. That's, uh, that's how we can look at it. But in this case, we can have a very rigorous proof that this is exactly the answer that we are going to see in the limit. And uh, if time allows, I'd like to show it to you. This again, this is the sequence we're talking about. The number of times n, where this a sub n is equal to 1, for example, or 7, and we divide by n later on. We want to understand this. When does it happen that the first digit of 2 to the n is equal to k? a sub n is equal to k. And if we think about it, this happens if and only if. We have k times some big power of 10 on one side, k plus 1 times this power of 10, and here we have 2 to the n. So 2 to the n is between uh, k times k with a bunch of zeros and k plus 1 with a bunch of zeros. Okay, maybe uh, let's, uh, let me explain. So we have 2, uh, 0, 4, 8, right? This is 2 to 11. Okay, why is the first digit 2? Because this is uh, between 2,000 and 3,000. Strictly less than 3,000 and bigger than 2,000. That's how we get this 2. Okay, so this is the inequality that is important here. And I'm going to take this inequality, uh, move it to another piece of paper, and study it. And uh, the first and probably the crucial thing to do here is to take logs. Instead of this, we can uh, say the following. We can uh, take logs of uh, all these sides. And we'll see that uh, we have m plus log k. This is base 10. Here we have also m plus log base 10 of k plus 1. And here we have log of this, which is just n times log 2, also base 10. OK, so log 2 base 10 is going to be very important for us. Let me uh, call it Greek letter alpha. And so what, is, uh, what do we see? We see that n times alpha is between this and this. And this is m plus some number between 0 and 1. And this is also m plus some number between 0 and 1. OK? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but then we can kind of get rid of m. Because what's important is the fractional part. So the fractional part of n alpha, this is what we want to study. And it is between log k, let me just ignore tens here, and log k plus 1. Professor, what do you mean by fractional part? OK, uh, we have, uh, maybe for this, we, it's better to draw a number axis. So this is the uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. But now integers are not enough. I mean, integers are very good numbers, but we need to talk about other numbers, such as logarithm of 2 base 10. And then we multiply them by 2, 3, 4, and so on. OK, so they now can appear somewhere in this axis, not necessarily at 4 or at 5. They could be somewhere in between, for example, here. And then we say that this difference between the nearest integer and this is called the fractional part. Uh, so if this is x, this is the fractional part of x. Or, uh, in fact, I'm going to use, uh, sometimes it is uh, uh, called uh, x modulo 1. OK, it's like a remainder. OK, if you divide the uh, 7 by 2, you get a remainder 1. Why? Because uh, let's divide 7 by 2. We have 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. These are even numbers. And here we have 7, the outcast. OK? So when we divide 7 by 2, we have a remainder. That's exactly what it is. The difference between 7 and the closest even number. And here we do the same for real numbers. We take the real number x, and we find uh, the closest integer to the left, and it's called the integer part, naturally. And the difference is called the fractional part. So I'm going to denote it by n alpha mod 1. OK? And so the uh, upshot is that this n alpha mod 1 is in the interval from log k to log 
k plus 1. Okay, so this is not very pretty. Maybe I should start over. It's okay. No, it's perfect. Okay. You want another piece of paper? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, and now we are, uh, the proof actually goes to a different branch of mathematics, which is called dynamics or dynamical systems. That's what I like working on. And uh, let me show you why. Well, I already have this crucial observation that everything depends on things modulo 1. So when we have this number line, we only care about this, in, this interval or this interval or this interval and so on. In other words, what we can do is we can cut the number line and glue together all integers. So we are going to have a circle. This is 0, which is the same as 1, which is the same as 2, and so on. Okay, and this, uh, if we have uh, the number uh, x here, this is going to be x modulo 1. And maybe this x represents a very big uh, real number. And then we go lots of, lots, lots of times around the circle, and this is what uh, we are going to see. Okay? And now we're going to look at this circle and interpret what we had before geometrically, so to say. Okay? Remember, we're talking about n alpha mod 1. So let me draw another circle. We we'll start of 0, and 0 is actually 0 times alpha. And then from 0 times alpha, we get 1 times alpha, so, which is just alpha. And this is what happens when we take this point and rotate by alpha. And so here we have alpha, and then we go, uh, we do it so like this, and then we do it again, and now we have two alpha, and uh, here we have three alpha, and here we have four alpha, and five alpha, and six alpha, and now we're doing something like this, right? Because we keep on going, and uh, we already done full circle. And so we, uh, in fact, uh, in the real line, we added one, but it doesn't matter because we're taking only the fractional part. And so what we are doing is we are studying rotation of the circle by alpha. And now I want to put uh, these boundaries, log k and log k plus 1. This is 0. Uh, somewhere here we have log 2. Somewhere here we have uh, log uh, 2 plus log 3, so sorry, uh, so, sorry, no, just, just log 3, I'm sorry. Okay, and uh, here we have log 4 and so on, log 5, log 6, log 7, log 8, log 9. So these uh, intervals are getting smaller. So these are, these are the intervals. Uh, maybe we can uh, call them some names. For example, this is going to be I1, I2, I3, all the way to i9. Okay? What we said before is that uh, a n is equal to k. This is our first digits of first digit of uh, 2 to the n. If and only if n alpha mod 1 is in i sub k. So we have this little interval, for example, i3. And we look at this sequence, which starting from here, we generate like this, a bunch of numbers. And every time we rotate. And we're interested in the number of times we hit this interval. Okay, and then we see why this happens. Because I1 is the longest one, and I2 is the next longest, and so on. So the, these are bigger targets. These are small targets. Exactly, yeah. So I9 is a tiny little target, and so we hit it less often. And uh, the reason why is that there is certain properties of these rotations, which uh, is called equidistribution. Equidistribution means that in the long run, uh, longer intervals get more points and shorter intervals get shorter points. In other words, if we, uh, if we now uh, take an arbitrary any interval i, it doesn't have to be one of those, it could be something here, and then we, and you look at the, uh, the number of uh, n's, again between 0 and big N, such that uh, n alpha mod 1 is in i divide by n, this converges to the length of i. Depends on how long i is. i9 is short, so we get a small limit. i1 is pretty long, so we get a huge limit, 30%. i9 is very short, so we get 2. Point, uh, sorry, 4.6%. Okay? That's all because of equidistribution of those rotations. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a mathematical theorem which was proved 100 years ago. And uh, 
I guess I can try to show why it holds. So actually, the key feature of this system that uh, is used in the proof is that this alpha, right? We have this little number, number alpha. Remember that alpha is log uh, 2 to base 10. This alpha happens to be an irrational number. And uh, it's clear that otherwise we would have a problem. If alpha was rational, then we start here. We go all over and over and over. And then we hit the same 0. So we're going to have a periodic sequence. And because alpha is irrational, this is something that can be easily proved. Uh, we are not going to have a periodic sequence. So act actually, we see that uh, this uh, huge uh, system of powers of 2, huge sequence of powers of 2, right here, it is never going to repeat infinitely. OK? It's aperiodic. That's something that follows from the fact that log 10, sorry, log 2 base 10 is not a rational number. That's an exercise. Uh, you can prove it, or you can watch uh, some other video where this is proved. OK, and uh, this is a basic uh, property of irrational rotations of the circle. Those irrational rotations, uh, they tend to visit intervals uh, depending on uh, the length. So the, this is uh, more frequent, this is less frequent, and so on. It's like this is an ocean, and we're firing random torpedoes. Uh, of course, we're going to hit the big ship the uh, most. That's, uh, that's right, except for one little thing. We're not firing random torpedoes. It's a very determined mathematical system. And this is a type of thing that dynamical systems, uh, dynamic, uh, that people in dynamical systems are studying, Some, something very uh, well defined. Uh, every point knows where it goes next. And still, in the long run, uh, you see some features which uh, are present in the random behavior. Like if you're firing, uh, of course, if you're firing points at random and trying to hit the circle, you're going to hit the longer interval the most. And here it's very uh, well determined, and still uh, the same law uh, holds. And this is the same law which we, sh we saw in Benford's law. So this is a mathematical explanation of Benford's law uh, for this particular model. And uh, equidistribution of irrational rotations is something that uh, uh, can be proved quite easily, but uh, I guess the editor says that it's about time to finish. The leading digit, for example, uh, you could look at the populations of all the countries in the world and look at the leading digits of all those. So, for example, if it was 1,269, then the leading digit in that case is, is the 1.